Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a 2D click style game in Unity and welcome to episode 9. So this time we're going to add a couple more sound effects. Uh, so when we make a cookie and when we try selling a cookie and we can't because we don't have enough. And we'll also start coding random problems which will cause you to lose money or stock. So for example, the more cookies we have, the bigger probability of getting a disaster as we'll call it in this tutorial. So firstly, let's add those extra sound effects. So I'm going to go to my audio folder, drag and drop these two audio clips. And you can get them on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets as always. And let's hold control, press D on cache 002. And we'll have this as cookie sound. And then we'll drag and drop chomp cookie. Hold control, press D again, and we'll have no cookie on there. Now, obviously you don't have to have these sound effects. I'm just adding them in for a little bit more depth to the game. And we'll have this as no cookie. So what we'll do is on sell cookie, we will go to uh, the script here, which links us to this button object. And we'll need sell cookie right here. So if we open that up in Visual Studio, we need to add in one extra variable, which will be the audio source for the no cookie. So public audio source and no cookie semicolon and that no cookie sound will play at the same time that we get this saying not enough cookies to sell so no cookie dot play up close bracket save and then next thing we need to do is just drag and drop that object here which is that one next when we have make cookie again put an object and it is a main button click, which is this one right here. So if we go in here, an extra variable, so public audio source cookie sound, semicolon. And whenever we click it, we want cookie sound dot play. Up close bracket, semicolon, save, wait for it to update. And then we drag and drop that cookie sound over here. So let's try out those two extra sound effects. It's nothing too fancy. Sell cookie. And if we don't have enough. Perfect. So now let's start looking at coding these disasters. And this is where the coding gets a little bit tricky. But it gets a lot of fun because there's so many different things that you can actually come up with to create this. So firstly, let's create a new script. And let's have C sharp script and let's just call it disaster script. So we can code many different types of disasters in here. And we're going to start with one which allows us to, let's say, uh, lose some cookies in a factory fire. So for this, we're going to get rid of void start and any annotations, we don't need them. Now I'm thinking we'll need about four or five variables. So let's start with this one. Let's have public and game object. And firstly, we'll need the status box because that status box is going to say that we've lost so many cookies in a fire. So status box, semicolon. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have to perform a check to generate a number of global cookies. So what we'll need to do is we'll call it cookie check for now. So public and we'll have it float because there is a possibility that it will be a decimal number and we'll call it cookie check so this number is going to be a way of determining a number that we can use to reference against uh, a chance of disaster uh, next we'll need to generate that possibility and we can do that with an integer so public int and we'll call it gen chance short for generate chance Next, what we'll need is a bool to say whether we are currently in a disaster or trying to generate a disaster or not. So public bool disaster active. And by default, we'll make that equal to false because when we start the game, we won't be in one. 
And um, do we need... Yes, we do need another one because we're going to have to generate a number to take away from our cookies. So we could lose, let's say, half of our cookies or 25% of our cookies in a fire. So we'll have public int cookie loss semicolon. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first things first, in void update, what we're going to do is have cookie check constantly monitor whatever our cookies our cookie value is and that's from global cookies so it's going to be global cookies dot cookie count so global cookies dot cookie count and we'll divide that by 100 so for example if we have 250 cookies that will make cookie check equals to 2.5. And this is where we can, for example, say, if we generate more than 10, then disaster happens. If not, we just carry on as normal. So theoretically then, if we have, let's say, 5,000 cookies, there's a you know, bit more of a possibility of getting that to occur. So I think for testing purposes, we may reduce this to 10, just to kind of get it to happen a little bit more active, but I would recommend this a little bit of a higher number. Maybe something you could change later on. So if disaster active double equals false, then do the following. And we'll need to create a coroutine. So start coroutine. And we'll, I'm not sure what to call this. Let's just put start disaster up oh, close bracket close curly bracket uh, sorry close bracket semicolon so next thing we need to create i enumerator start disaster open close bracket and open curly bracket so next thing we need to do is we need to firstly set the disaster active variable to true Disaster active equals true because we don't want to start this all over again every frame. Next thing we need to do is generate how often or rather how much the range is that we could perhaps have a problem. So we're going to use gen chance and make it equal to random dot range and in brackets one and maximum. I guess uh, for the actual game that I'm going to make for this, I would have 200, but I'm going to put just 20 for now. So the lower number we have, the more of a chance we have of generating a problem. And this could be dynamic. You don't necessarily have to have this stuff. There are ways of making it dynamic. For example, you could base this on some magical math, which you know takes everything you've got into account and changes this number. But for convenience sake, we're going to have it as 20 for now. And what we're going to say is if our cookie check, which is our cookies divided by 10, is greater than whatever we've generated here, then we have a disaster. So if, and in brackets, cookie check is greater or equal to gen chance then we do the following so firstly what we're going to have to do is decide how much of our cookies we're going to lose at this point so we need to work out cookie loss and we're going to make that equal to our global cookies dot cookie count but we're going to have to round this up a bit because we can't take away a decimal number from an integer. It's just not going to work. Unity will have a bit of a fit. So we're going to have to have math f dot round to int. And in brackets, we need to put our sum, which is global cookies dot cookie count. And let's say we want to take away a quarter of our cookies. So 25% of our cookies. So we multiply whatever our cookie count is by 0 0.25 and that will give us 
25% of what our cookie count is. So if we close bracket and semicolon, what we need to do here, in fact, let's come up with an error. Okay, that doesn't like us doing that because we need to put an F there, I would assume, because it's a float, of course. So it's going to round. So if we say we have 10 cookies, that is going to take 25% of our cookies, which is 2.5, and round it to its nearest whole number. So if it's a point, if it's a five, it'll round it up. If it's less than five, it'll round it down. So in this case, it's going to take three cookies away from our ten. So next thing we need to do is let's say, uh, like we have, if we don't have enough cookies, we want it to say that we've lost so many cookies in a factory fire. And obviously, we're going to be using some UI here. So we need to have using Unity Engine dot UI in the namespace. And this status box is the one we're going to work with. So status box dot get component and it's spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and let's say you lost and then space quote ampersand and we're going to say the amount of cookies that we've actually lost so cookie loss and quote space cookies in a factory fire. So this line right here is going to say, yep, okay, that we've lost so many cookies in this factory fire. That should be plus, sorry, not an ampersand. There we go. So Yes, that line's fine now. It's telling us that we're going to lose that many. So we now need to take away the amount of cookies lost from here. So we need to take this. So global cookies dot cookie count minus equals cookie loss semicolon. So it will take it away. At this point, we want this to kind of linger for, let's say, three seconds so yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets three because with the selling cookie if we don't have enough it displays it and then instantly animates it so it's only a quick glimpse of what it says this way we have this on screen that little bit longer so after three seconds we'll play the animation which makes it fade away and that is status box dot get component spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot play and brackets and quotes i believe it is status anim yes it is that's the name of our animation so status anim quote close bracket and after this what we need to do is basically close our if statement so that that's all that's going to occur here that's all we need if the disaster happens, that's all we're doing. We're taking away from our cookies and displaying a message. And regardless whether this happens or not, we're going to wait an extra 10 seconds. So yield, return new, wait for seconds and in brackets 10, semicolon. Now this number can be any number you want at all. Obviously the lower the number, the more frequent you could get a disaster. The higher the number, the less often you're likely to get it. So if you set this to 100, this will only run once every 100 seconds, whereas at the moment it's going to run every 10 seconds. So after we've done that, what we need to do is set disaster active back to false, semicolon, and save that script. So you can see the process of what's going on here. We're going to a little calculation to say, you know, is this cookie count greater than what we've generated as a possibility. If it is, then let's take away some cookies in a fire. So let's go back to Unity, make sure it has a bit of a think and everything seems okay. So now we go to game object, create empty, and we'll have this as disaster object. And next thing we need to do is drag and drop that disaster onto there, no problem. 
So let's set our status box, which is that right there. Is it status text? I think it's status text. Let's just check. Yes, it is. So now let's press play. And if we keep ourselves on disaster object, we can see our generated chance is currently 18. And if we make cookies, you can see our cookie check going up. So the more cookies I have, the more chance we've got of generating a problem. So at this point, if it generates less than six, there we go. So did we, yes, we actually lost cookies then, didn't we? So let's try this again. So let's see if it'll generate less than, did it? There we go. So once again, we've lost. In fact, one thing I do think we need to do is we need to turn off and back on that cell cookie just in case, because I, I do think it may cause a little bit of a problem. So it might be wise after we've played our animation, which lasts for maybe a second. So if we take this line of code here, change it to one second, and what I'm going to do is turn off and back on the uh, status box just in case. It's not going to make too much of a difference in a game like this. Not at all. So status box dot set active false and then status box dot set active true and save. So this is pretty much how you can code any disaster within the game. You know, there's no set way of doing it. There's no real uh, problems that you could en encounter as such doing this, but you just have to make sure that these are relative. So logically, when we're doing this, this should be about 100. This should probably be 200. You know, it's something you can work with. So in this case, if we quickly check this again, So I'm hoping to get to about five, six. Okay, so 70 cookies. And let's see what happens if we can generate below that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Some time today. I think it's generated the same number twice there. 13, very nice. So hopefully this time it's going to say something less than 13 quite sure if it's there we go so yes it's still working you lost 21 cookies in a factory fire and off it goes again so excellent this script is working perfectly now so we leave this here for now um next what i want to do is code the ability to sell cookies automatically and i think we will rotate this guy to give a bit more depth to it uh, so that should be a lot of fun we may even touch upon more disasters because it's still something i want to do for example, uh, we get raided by the IRS or something and lose money or, you know, the bakers decide to quit or, you know, if you want, guys, please have a go try and do that yourself because I think it'd definitely be worth it. So, guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.